Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing another volume of my empty series. I've done a couple of empties videos, I'll throw the playlist up in the cards if you want to check that out, but essentially I'm just going to go through my empties for the past couple of weeks, and 90% of them are skincare rather than makeup. So I do have a couple makeup things, but it's going to be mostly skincare. Before we jump into the video, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like empties videos and little reviews that I can give you of these empty products, and if you haven't already, I hope you consider subscribing and hitting the little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video every Monday through Friday. Okay, so we're gonna start with the makeup wipes. I'm trying to be careful to not crinkle them like right next to my mic, but um, I do have quite a few empty packets of makeup removing wipes. I use these every day to get the majority of my makeup off, and then I use a different micellar water for my eye makeup. The first makeup remover wipe I have is from Neutrogena. These are just their regular makeup removing cloths. I really enjoy Neutrogena wipes. I think they're just made really well. I think they actually get everything off. These are really good, and they don't drop it. These are really good and these come in like the bulk package you can buy from Costco, which I think is the best deal that you can find for these. Uh, my ultimate favorite from this line isn't this one and if you've seen my other empties videos you'll just i'm kind of like a broken record at this point i really like the purple packaging these are the night calming cleansing towelettes they're just a little bit scented but i feel like they are a bit more gentle on my skin and i just really like this formula so my favorites are still the purple package but you can buy the blue ones that do almost the same thing and you get the better deal because you can buy them in bulk at costco so the other makeup moving cloths that i've actually been testing out because i've still been looking for like a cheap alternative to the Neutrogena ones even though I do love them. These are the makeup removing cleansing wipes from AOA. This is the Shop Miss A brand. I did buy a few products from them and I've been somewhat impressed. I'm very impressed by their sponges. I think they have some great sponges for a dollar and that's definitely where I'm going to be buying my sponges from now on. But I saw that they had a dollar per pack for makeup removing wipes and I had to try them out. So I bought a couple of them. Currently, I think I have one pack left because I bought like every scent that they had. Um, so I did pick up the lavender scented ones, the rose water scented ones, the green tea ones, and then I have a pack of their unscented ones that I'm still testing out. When they say scented, they're not heavily scented. Like I could barely tell one wipe from the other. So you're not gonna get like a rose smelling cloth or a green tea smelling cloth out of these. I actually like, oh, I'm trying to think, like, like the moisture, the formula of the actual makeup removing towelettes in here. What I'm trying to get past is that the towelettes themselves are a little strange. Like of course they're, ch they're cheaply made because they're only a dollar for a pack of 15 but the the wipes are a little hard to wipe against like i know that's a really tiny thing to be a little bit upset about um but i'm torn between them being a little bit hard to work with because it's hard to actually wipe them like across your face or down your neck the formula for makeup it still removes your makeup like at the end of the day it still pretty much does the same thing it's just a little bit more work because it's just it's hard to explain like the the cloths are made differently and because of that, it makes it a little bit harder to actually use on your face, but it still does the job. Like it removes your makeup, it removes swatches really well. If anything, I would use these for swatches, definitely. So I'm torn between these are a little bit hard to use and I have a makeup wipe that I really love and, but they're a dollar and you should definitely like switch to using them because they're only a dollar. So I'm gonna go through that last pack that I have still reformulate. I did just get a full box of the Neutrogena wipes from Costco a couple weeks ago that I haven't even opened up yet so I really don't need to buy any more but I'm still like on the lookout for a wipe that I like as much as the Neutrogena ones. Okay so getting into skincare proper. This is a product that won't be a surprise if you've seen either any of my skincare videos or my last empty video. This is the vitamin C serum from the Measurable Difference line and it's just a it's just a serum. I don't think it does anything magical. It's just really moisturizing and my skin reacts really well to it and I like having it in my routine. I can get this for $6 at my TJ Maxx and I currently have like three backups because it's hard to find it when you're looking for it. So whenever I see it at TJ Maxx, I buy a backup. So I've got three of them. So I should be good theoretically for the rest of the year. But I really enjoy this line. I really think if you're thinking about building a skincare routine bringing in serums that it's better to start with a more affordable serum just so you can get used to it being actually a part of your routine and that you're not 
jumping onto a hundred dollar serum before you've even gotten used to the idea of a serum if that makes sense because when i first started using this i would forget to use it a lot <laughs> and it took a while to actually build my skincare routine to the point where i remembered all my little steps so i really think you should start with a cheaper serum just get used to it and if you enjoy it and you like having that part of your routine then maybe splurge on a more expensive serum but you really don't need to and I say that with an asterisk because I do have an expensive night serum that I really like but I only got to that after incorporating these cheaper serums and then like from the ordinary those kind of serums too so I finally used this up I feel like I've had this for a long time this is from Clinique this is the dramatically different moisturizing lotion and then this is the 6.7 fluid ounces I think they make one bigger than this one but this is a bit of a pricey moisturizer I really like it I've used it for a couple of years now and it just works really well with my combination skin but I'm currently trying out some dupes for this I know someone recommended the Neutrogena Hydro Boost gel I am going to pick that up as soon as I finish up the other dupe that I'm currently trying out but right now the dupe that I'm working on it's almost the same price so it's not really a dupe so much as just an alternative but I'm going to work my way through that because that was a gift and once that's done I'm going to continue looking for a dupe. This is a great moisturizer if it's in your price range. They actually came out one, they came out with one like recently where it's more of a jelly and I tried that at Sephora and it felt way too um like it didn't really sink into my skin that well so I wouldn't try that one but they do have some great moisturizers if it's within your budget I would definitely say try it out get a sample but if, Personally, I think it's a bit much to sink in to like an everyday skincare routine because you're, you're going to be using it morning and night. The next skincare item is a bit different. This one's actually a nail care item that I've been working on for a while. This is from Deborah Lipman. This is a cuticle oil. Now, I really like to buy this specific kit from Sephora ever since I started actually taking care of my nails. And it's from Deborah Lipman and it's got a cuticle remover, it's got the cuticle oil, you get like a tool in there, and I think you get a file. I'll throw a picture of the kit right here. But I've bought that kit like twice already and I absolutely adore it. I go through the oil faster than anything else, but I actually already went through the cuticle remover a few months ago and I just threw it out. I didn't think to put it in an empties video, but I did buy just like a bigger bottle of cuticle remover from Sally's. So that's just what I use now. It's a little bit cheaper. And I do have one other small bottle of a cuticle oil that I'm going to go through before I actually try to make my own. I'll throw the video up in the cards uh, if you don't know who Neological is she's hilarious and actually gives some great tips every now and then and she tells in this video how to make your own cuticle oil and it's a lot more affordable and you can pretty much make it in bulk so once I get through the other bottle of cuticle oil that I have I'm gonna be trying out her recipe so all in all this is a nice cuticle oil but I think it's too expensive for what you're getting okay so now it's time to actually get into the makeup or primers primer and makeup the first primer I'm going to talk about is actually from NYX. This is my tried and true glitter primer. If you've seen any of my tutorials, if you've seen any of my get ready with me, this plays a big role in keeping shades on my lid. I'm not wearing this today, but it's only because I am wearing one of the Stila glitters and I find that that's one of the only formulas where I don't have to use this glitter primer before it and it still looks good throughout the day. But other than like those Stila glitters, before any shadow touches my lid, I have this. <laughs> I already have a backup, so I'm not going to go without this. This is really affordable. I found this at TJ Maxx for fairly cheap, but even like from NYX themselves, it's, it's less than $10. And this lasted me months and months and months. It's a great investment, especially if you have hooded lids. It'll change your eyeshadow game. The next empty was a, a pretty big surprise to me and I talked about it a little bit in my Too Faced video, but this is the Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 RX Priming and Replenishing Setting Spray. This, I didn't think, like, I heard about the setting spray and I heard a lot of people liked it, but I didn't think it was going to be this good. It... Just for a little bit of background, normally when I set, I like to set or I like to spray a spray that will meld all of my powders in together first like the Milani make it last spray or the um, MAC fix plus spray 
and then I'll let that dry and then I'll spray on a setting spray like the Scandinavia spray that I like so much. When I use the Too Faced one, I don't have to do that like second step. I can just spray this and I'm good. It melts everything together and it extends the wear of my makeup. And to me, that actually justifies the price point. I will be buying this again. I'm not sure when because I still have a lot of setting sprays to go through, but I will be buying this again at some point in the future and the full size. This is the mini size that I got. I don't actually, did I buy this by itself? I forgot how I got this. <laughs> But this is a mini, but I will be buying a full size at some point. The next makeup empty I have is from Cover Effects, and this is their matte setting powder in light. This is actually a really good under eye setting powder. I've tried it on the rest of my face, and it, it's way too light, and it doesn't do that great on, um, surprisingly, it's a matte setting spray, but it doesn't look great on my oily skin. Because I get really oily right here and on my chin, so I like to set whatever I use to bake my under eye on my chin and around my nose. It didn't do great around there, but it was a really great under eye setting powder. I got this as like a, uh, a little point perk. It's a mini of the actual full size one. I have another one of these, so I'm not going to rebuy or get this again. But it is a good under eye setting powder, but not something I would go out of my way to really get again. Like it didn't blow my mind. It was just a good under eye powder. I don't think like the full size is worth whatever they're charging for it because I'm sure it's a lot. But if you have a chance to get like a point perk, this does last a long time if you're just using it to set your under eyes. And the last product we're going to talk about today is a mascara. This is from Essence. This is the Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara. This is the three month mark for this mascara and I absolutely adore it, but I am sticking very tightly to my three month rule when it comes to mascaras. This is just the best mascara you can get at the drugstore or at Ulta. It's incredible. The brush on this is just the perfect size and shape. It's, it is fairly thick. I like to um, brush off all the excess formula onto the actual bottle, but this is just like the best shape for a brush for my lashes. The formula itself curls my lashes, it, it extends them, it, uh, it does make your lashes look like you're wearing falsies. Like this is not a false advertising, it actually is a great mascara. And it's like 3 or $4 at Ulta. I always get it at Ulta because you can get coupons. Essence does go on sale quite a lot, like buy two, get one free, or buy three, get three free. This is something that I would stock up on if I didn't already have like a little mini drawer of mascaras that I have to try out. Mascara is something that's a bit hard to try out because you do have to test them for, you know, the length that the mascara is good. Because you don't want to buy a mascara that's only good for the first week. Like, mascaras can dry out, this one doesn't. So mascara testing is tough, but if you guys want to see a video all about mascaras that I've tested throughout the entire three-month span of having them, let me know, because there are a few that I think are really great, and there are a few that I've thrown out after the first week, because they've been garbage. <laughs> So that's everything for this empties video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye.